Hey, welcome to our Strengths Conversations. I am Jane Liebecker, and I'm coming to you from Seattle, Washington. I am an Eddie Villa certified coach specializing in the Gallup Clifton Strengths. Hi, everyone. My name is Minetta Fields. I, too, am an Eddie Villa certified coach joining you from the wonderful state of Maryland. And I absolutely have learned that the Gallup Strengths Assessment is a powerful tool that I use in my coaching business. And our special guest today is Dondra Rose. Dondra, where are you coming from today? I'm coming in from Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt oh, Lake City. Nice. Salt Lake. So Dondra, we're going to get started. Can you share with us what your dominant domains are? Sure. Um, I have two dominant domains. My first one is strategic thinking. And my second one is relationship building. One so day. I love to do everything in a way that honors my desire to think and create and learn and connect with my, I always say my, connect with the right people, but my right people. <laughs> Not your right people. I say the same thing. So how did you <laughs> learn about strengths? So I'm a flight attendant and I was complaining about my job to another flight attendant friend of mine. And I think she just got sick and tired of me complaining. And so she mentioned, you know, you would probably do really well tapping into this guy named Eddie Via. So I learned about Eddie before I learned about strengths coaching or strengths finder. And so then I just like went on YouTube and ate everything I could. And then I realized, oh, I could just look them up and like, see if I can get a coaching. And when I tried to buy into that, I ended up buying into a coaching program and learned about Clifton Strengths and changed my whole world. Wonderful. So when you did all of those beautiful things, how did that feel for you? It was amazing. When I got my strengths done, I realized, <laughs> I felt like I was hurt for the first time in my life. But I realized that I had lived a life that was completely pretend. I had masked my entire life, not knowing, you know, completely unaware. So it was like, oh, my God, somebody who can understand me. I can finally be who I really am. You know, awesome. Awesome. I'm going to talk to you today about your strength of connectedness. So where is that in your top 10, Dondra? It's my number three. Number is pretty high. Yeah, I love yeah. it. And so for those who may not know what connect connectedness is, I'm just going to read the brief description from Gallup. So people strong in the connectedness theme have faith in the links between all things. They believe there are few coincidences and that at almost every event has a reason. Does that hold true for you? Not almost every event. <laughs> That's absolutely true. I love it. So yeah. what are your number one and your number five strengths, Tondra? So my number one is context and my number five is strategic. Wow. Mm, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> we love those <laughs> strengths and we love you because you have them. So tell <laughs> us how you use connectedness. Give us an example of how that would play out for you. So, you know, it's really interesting because all of your strengths, you have an ability to use them. I don't think you do with connectedness. So this is part of the phenomena of connectedness. I don't think you can direct connectedness. I think connectedness uses you. I think it's like a grace from God that you're gifted with. Mm. And if you can be in gratitude of it, I think that strengthens that muscle that you're aware of it. But I don't know that I can be like, today, I'm going to connectedness. I can pray for that. But because it it's not a singularity thing, right? It's either like you get downloads of information that just come like this that you have no control over, or you uh, like you meet somebody like, like I can set out the intention of, you know, I really would love to have a connectedness day, God. And then I may run into somebody who like, you know, oh, I knew your mother like 30 years ago, you know, like it, it may be something like that. But mm -hmm. I, it's not like strategic, I can sit down with pen and paper and work my strategic. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that with connectedness other than prayer, meditation, gratitude. Mm -hmm. I just, I just don't know. I love how it shows up for you. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it does. It, 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 and it also, I'm very blessed with the fact that it happens a lot. It happens a lot where I'll see those synchronicities of things and, uh, and I know that that's connectedness, but I don't know how to make that happen. <laughs> well, then this is going to be an interesting question. How do, do your context and your strategic kind of interact with connectedness? Now this I can answer. So, you okay. know, it's, yeah, it's really, I I prove and play really well together. So strategic is super, super, very creative for me. 
And strategic sees all the patterns and it's way outside the box, right? Like I, I have strategic thinking. I do not think I'm intelligent. I think I'm creative because I live in this other world where I get these downloads of weird creative things. And it's like, I'll see, um, like I just recently did this abundance um, blocking talk and somebody asked, asked me at the end, how did you get that? And I got that from the word quince and I knew it had five seeds. So I went down a whole bunch of rabbit holes trying to like catch up the rest of the information because I don't get it all at once. I just get like a download of something and then I have to go research it. So that's how it plays with strategic. Okay. Cause strategic like, Oh, here's a pattern. Here's a pattern. Here's a pattern and kind of piecemeals it together. The way that it all works with context for me is, you know, I can't do anything without context. I got to go back in time and find the origination of something. So with, with, for me, that's always seems to relate to, a moment in time of the origin of this thing, even if that moment in time is now, like if we, can I give you an example? Can I give you a story? Sure. Sorry. Yeah. So, okay. I'm a flight attendant and years ago, my company did this co-chair program with Aer Lingus, which is the airline of Ireland. So I had the opportunity to go fly as one of their flight attendants. And when people in America would ask me, why are you going to go fly with Ireland? I didn't have a clue. I just knew I was being drawn to it. So I made up this story and I said, oh, I want to go. I said, I want to meet a nice boy named Jimmy, Jimmy Kelly. We're going to be grand friends. We're going to travel the countryside together, me and Jimmy Kelly. And I think I made up the name Jimmy Kelly because it was like the most Irish name I could think of because I had never been to Ireland, you know? And uh, so I've been saying this story for like three months. Finally, I get to Ireland and we go over for 10 days of training, me and three other girls. And we have this cab driver who picks us up. His name happens to be Jimmy. So the first couple of days, there's four of us and I'm the most junior. So I'm in the back. So by the fourth day, I finally get to sit up front with Jimmy. And we've, you know, we've all developed a rapport with him. But as we're driving along, I look and he's got his um, license on his dash. And it says Seamus, which is James, an Irish Kelly. And so I hit him and I go, Jimmy, are you Jimmy Kelly? And he's like, yeah. Like, you know, he doesn't know this story, right? But all the girls in the back do. And they're like, oh, my God, you know? <laughs> and I'm like. Jimmy, this is like, this is huge. This is crazy. You know, I've been talking about you for three months now. I told everybody I was going to move to Ireland, meet, you know, fly with Aer Lingus, meet a nice boy named Jimmy Kelly. And he goes, you kidding? I go, yeah, I told him we'd be traveling the countryside together. He's like, well, then I guess we're destined to be grand friends forever. So even if the context is this moment right here, it still is this moment right here. You know what I mean? There still has to be an origin for me. There still has to be a meaning to it. So maybe it was the talking about it and bringing it into fruition. That was my moment of context, or maybe it was that moment right there when he was like, well, then it's destiny. We'll be grand friends forever. And we still are. We're very, very friends. One of my dearest friends. That's and you a- were traveling. Uh, what then? He was driving you. You were traveling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Traveling with him. And we did. We all of, he's a cab driver. So whenever he had to like deliver luggage or, you know, things like that, where there was no passengers, he'd call me up and go, do you want to go to Belfast? And I'm like, yes, yes, of course I want to go. <laughs> right. Well, get downstairs and I'll pick you up. You know, we traveled all over the countrysides of Ireland, best tour guide ever. Yep. Wow. So I was going to ask you what you liked about connectedness, but I think you've already shared that. It's a beautiful <laughs> shit. Yeah. 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 Uh, we can see you love that strength. So Dondra, what would you say to somebody who is sitting on the fence about taking the Gallup Strengths Assessment? I always say the same thing, you know, don't waste another moment of your life being unsure of the direction that you're heading in. You know, this is just a blueprint of who you really are. People, so many people are so busy living life, you know, Mm. and just like they're out there trying to make a living that they forget to be alive. Mm. And if you understand what your strengths are, then you understand what makes you feel like you're alive. And I really believe because I, you know, I do have the connectedness also has a vibe of relationship with God, right? So I believe we were all put here for a purpose. And I think knowing your strengths leads you in the direction of your purpose. I can't imagine that your purpose has something to do with anything that doesn't make you feel like your soul's on fire and you're excited and you're energized and you're, you know, in pure gratitude of all that you bring to the world, you know, and you're going to find that when you get your strengths done, you're going to find who you are and what you love. Boom. Mic drop. (laughs) Yeah. That was, yeah. Awesome. And absolutely. 100% true. Thank you, Dondra. This has been an amazing conversation. And as always with you, and uh, we really appreciate your coming and chatting with us today. Thank you so much for sharing the gift of you. Aw, thank you for sharing the gift. 
this is such a great platform. I love you both. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care, Dandra.